Hello, I'm Dr. Jeanette Raymond, psychologist, psychotherapist, and relationship expert. I'm also the author of Now You Want Me, Now You Don't, Fear of Intimacy, 10 Ways to Recognize It, and 10 Ways to Manage It in Your Relationship. And today I'm going to talk to you about how exhausted you might be feeling when you're trying really hard in your relationship to be present, to be available, um, and it just doesn't work. You are stressed, you're not getting recognized, your efforts are just, you know, blown away in the wind, and you get angry and you start protesting that you're not going to do it anymore because it doesn't work and there's no point and all those sorts of things. And, you know, that's very common in couples because each one is feeling that they're making all the effort and they're not getting the other one to either respond or to even acknowledge that the efforts are being made so they get very, very tired and then they stop uh, being present in the relationship completely. It's a form of protest. And really, it's uh, to do with the war that you're having inside of you that then becomes a war outside of you. So let me tell you the story about a man, a uh, married man that uh, I had once as a client. And he always complained that he tried really, really hard to be a good husband, to listen to his wife, to be empathic, to understand her, but he just found that it was impossible because he would just get immediately upset and angry and frustrated because she was pushing all his hot buttons and he really had no way of managing it. Basically, he was at war with himself. He wanted to be the perfect husband. He wanted to be all the things his mother wasn't, like present, available, uh, nurturing, comforting, playful. He also wanted to be all the things that his father wasn't, which was supportive, encouraging, being a masculine role model, uh, taking him places. and recognizing his achievements as a student, as a young man, as an older brother, and so on. So he wanted to do all the things that his parents didn't do. He really, really tried, he put a lot of effort in, but he was absolutely exhausted because he was at war with himself. The part of him that wanted to do all these things was an idealistic, perfectionistic, unrealistic part that was driving him and pushing him and uh, judging him and criticizing him when he didn't perform according to these rules that he had in his head. And it would get really difficult for him to manage the conflict because these two parts of him were pulling him in different directions and he was caught in the middle. So what he did was he used his wife as one of the sides of his conflict. So he gave her the side that said, you're a bad person because you're not attentive, you're not supportive, you're not encouraging, you don't recognize me. So he gave his wife the judge's hat, the judge's gavel and the judge's executioner's axe. And he allowed himself to be the one who felt like I'm doing all the work and nobody's seeing me and I'm not um, being recognized and all my efforts are in vain. And that helped him manage his inner conflict because it was stressing him out and he was getting, you know, symptoms of panic and fatigue and all those sorts of things. But when he gave it to his wife, that part of him made her the judge, the jury and the executioner, he felt relieved because he only had one part of him to deal with. But what did it do to the relationship? It made it into a battle zone. It made it me and you, not us. And it created a huge sense of inequality because it was based on giving her the authority which she was supposed to use in a, in a punitive way. And it left him with a sense of helplessness and... Um, longing for 
attachment and nurturing and connection which he wasn't getting so they were not on equal planes as a couple they weren't helping each other they weren't getting to know each other they weren't in in uh, sympathy and empathy with what was going on in the moment they were playing the roles that this man created for them on the stage to manage his own inner war. So basically what I'm saying is, sometimes when you have an inner war, it becomes so awful that you have to make it an outer war and you choose your partner as the enemy. Not because she really is, but it's because you can't stand the two parts of you being inside you, your enemy and your helpless one, your helpless one and your judge and jury, your judge and jury and your martyrdom. It's too much. So when you sense that your relationship is taking on this un unequal, unequal uh, role where your partner is being given, you know, the judge and uh, the judge's hat and the critical tongue and the um, condemnatory attitude and you're at the other end feeling scared and helpless and you know, upset and angry and frustrated, then you know that you're nowhere near having an emotionally intimate connection. And that's really, really bad for the relationship. So what you can do is to notice that you're the one having this conflict and take that hat back from her and start working on letting yourself just be you. You don't have to be the martyr, you don't have to be the judge, you don't have to be any of those things. You're just you in the moment. You don't have to try to be something your parents weren't, or what you think you somebody wants, or what plans you made when you were 16 that you still haven't fulfilled in terms of you know being a good partner and so on. Just let yourself be you in the moment. You're a wonderful um, person already. You have so many things to share that are unique, and exciting and that'll be very very um, desirable to your partner if you allow them to be desirable in you you don't have to be the the person who does everything right and fulfills every of your obligations in order to be loved you can just be you and when you start loving yourself when you start accepting who you are by not looking at the future or trying to change the past, then you're in a zone where equality can triumph and you can start getting to know your partner as he or she really is instead of the roles that you give them to play and that who you are in reality. You know, when you stop trying to be who your dad wasn't, your mother wasn't, your brother wasn't, you know, what you hoped you would never be and all that kind of thing, just let yourself come out and get to know yourself and play. Just play with yourself, play with your partner, have fun together. All those pressures will be subdued and disappear and you won't be having this war inside you. You won't get stressed and upset and angry and make yourself sick and damage the relationship. So I hope that's helpful to you about emotional intimacy that can only be had if you stop that war inside you that you've taken outside you. Uh, let me know what comments you have. If you under, if you're in the position where you've been in doing what I'm telling you, and um, you you've realized how you put yourself in these very difficult positions and you can't get out of it, and you know you're just exhausted trying to juggle all the roles you've given yourself. I'd be delighted to hear from you, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions that you want to give me. And don't forget. The, the book is uh, Now You Want Me, Now You Don't. It gives you a ringside seat into the therapy that I did with this one male client who was very uh, wanting his relationship with his wife to work. And um, I helped him understand what her fears were. And you can be a fly on the wall of the therapy there as well as seeing their rocky relationship going back and forth, back and forth. I'd love to know what your comments are on that too. Okay, see you next time.